Oke, okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to uh, our microcontrollers lectures. And we will talk about the clock reset GPIO, especially for the PIC 60F877. Okay, let's start. So, uh, just I mentioned in the previous lectures that the uh, we talk only about the PIC 60F877 uh, or 877A uh, but in this slide uh, we will take a look the difference between 877 and 887 okay 877 and 887 uh, the first one here just like you, uh, you can see in this slide right here with the the arrow here the main difference between 877 and 887 is that 877 just uh, i mentioned in the last lecture that this microcontroller doesn't have internal crystal but it uh, in the 887 this microcontroller have the internal 32 kilohertz to 8 megahertz crystal so the impact of uh, this this kind of features that you have to build the specific circuit for the oscillator in the PIC 60F877 but not for the 887 because this microcontroller have internal as already have internal crystal oscillator Okay, uh, beside of this, uh, there are no, not different, uh, it's also the same with uh, 8K, third flash, 368 bytes data memory, 256 bytes of EEPROM, uh, maximum operating speed is 20 megahertz, uh, all of the microcontrollers support ICSP, but a uh, slight different uh, for the I.O. because uh, in the 877A, it has a uh, 33 IO, which is uh, in the 87 have a uh, 36, three different IO. Okay. Uh, also in the ATC, uh, ATC channels, also in 10 bit resolution, which uh, 877 has only eight, but 887 uh, have uh, 14 channels. The PWM is two. This is for the CCP and ECCP, and also uh, one for the serial communication usage. So this is the side by side uh, from the PIC 60F 60F877 versus PIC 60F887. Okay, but uh, we talk only about this microcontroller right here, PIC 60F877 only. So. This is the the internal simplified diagram for the 60F887. So we will skip this this uh, slide because uh, this slide is talk about the 887, not 877. So this is the Proteus schematic for the PIC 60F877 for the oscillator circuit. The oscillator circuit is connected to the OSC1 and OSC2 according to the pin of 13 and 14 and then uh, connected to the what's this uh, 33 33 or 22 30 uh, pico farad okay 33 pico farad here right it and also uh, the other pin is connected to the 33 pico farad as well and also to the to, to the edge of pin of the crystal itself. So this is the circuit of the external oscillator connected to the pin OSC1 and OSC2 according to pin number 13 and pin number 14. So this is the 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 default oscillator and I think uh, I talk about that at the previous lecture about this but in this lecture we will uh, repeat this this concept yeah to 
to remember more clearly about this uh, oscillator circuit. So, uh, the first one, uh, we talk about the reset. What is the reset? The reset is a condition which causes the microcontroller to immediately stop operation and clear its registers. Okay, uh, let me repeat uh, the, the definition here. That the reset condition causes the microcontroller to immediately stop operation and clear its registers. So, the reset signal can be generated externally at any time but uh, with the low logic level on the MCLR pin. So, what about the power on reset? We will talk about the power on reset uh, in the next slide. But you have to know that the reset condition always, yeah, just always cause the microcontroller to stop immediately the operation, current operation, and clear all the register. So, uh, it should start from the beginning again. Because if you power on the microcontroller applications, it's also like the reset condition. The reset condition, if needed, it can also be generated by the internal control logic. So, this one statement that I mentioned before that the power on condition, the power on condition, for the first time you power on the, the microcontroller, is always causes a reset. Okay? Now, since many transition events occur when the power supply is turned on, maybe by switch contacts flashing or sparkling, slow voltage rise, or gradual clock or frequency stabilization, it is necessary to provide a certain delay time for the microcontroller before starting to operate. Okay, it's necessary to provide a certain delay time to starting to operate. The two internal timers, PWLT and OSD, are responsible for this situation. Okay, so uh, this is the illustration about the power on, the power on condition, power on, and also for the reset condition that first, when the power supply voltage reaches 1.2, maybe here, 1.2, or 1.7 volts, a circuit called power up timer resets the microcontroller. Uh, it's about within uh, 72 milliseconds. Okay, it's it's very fast, 72 milliseconds. And then, as soon as this time expires, 72 milliseconds, another time called oscillator start up timer generated another reset signals within 1024 quartz oscillator periods. So when this delay ex expires, this the steady set expires, and the MCLR pin is set high, all conditions are met, and the microcontroller starts to execute the first instruction in the program. That's the chronological uh, for the power on and also the reset condition of the microcontroller to begin its operations. So on the other reset is the blackout reset. The blackout reset occurs when the power supply is normally off, just like this, it is normally off. The microcontroller then doesn't have the time to do something unpredictable, simply because the voltage drops very quickly below its minimum value. That's the blackout reset. The other one is the brown on reset. When the power supply voltage drops slowly, just like this, Please uh, compare to this, it is very quickly uh, drops below its minimum value, drops, but this slowly drop, slowly drops. When the power supply voltage drops slowly, a typical example is battery discharge, although the microcontroller experiences a much faster voltage drop when the process is running slowly, the internal electronics get gradually stop operating and the so-called the brown out reset occurs here before the microcontroller has completely stopped operation there is a real danger that circuits operating 
at higher voltage start performing unexpectedly. That's the the notes for our attendant uh, attention that before the com microcomputer uh, has completely stopped operation, there is a real danger that the circuit operating at higher voltages start performing ex unexpectedly. Burn reset can also cause fatal change to the program as it is stored in the on-chip flash memory. So the other one is, uh, so uh, the microcontroller have to to anticipate this kind of uh, reset because it's, it's dangerous situation. The other is noise. This is a special type of prone out reset, uh, you know, that is prone out reset. That occurs in industrial environment when the power supply voltage flashes momentarily just like this and drops below the minimum level here. Even briefly, the noise in the power line greatly affects the operation of the device. So this is uh, also a tension for us. So uh, how to, to, to anticipate here in the microcontroller have the MCL pin that uh, logic zero and the this pin causes immediate reset. So it is recommended to connect uh, as its own. So this, this pin is connected to the between uh, between the resistor and the capacitor. Okay, you have to to connect with the one kilo ohm or more, and also this capacitor is zero point one microfarad to the ground. So this is the typical circuit to reset immediately. The function of the auxiliary component is to maintain the pure logic of one during normal operation. If the, if the value of selected to give a high logic level to the pin after the T reset is complete, the microcontroller will start operation immediately normally. Okay, This may especially useful when necessary to synchronize microcontroller operation with additional electronics and the operation of multiple microcontrollers. So this is uh, it's, it's necessary to synchronize the operation of many or multi microcontrollers or microcontroller with the other device. To avoid possible faults with prone out reset, the PIC 60F87 has a built-in protection mechanism. This is simple, but the effective circuit that responds whenever the power supply voltage drop below 4 volts and maintains this level for over 100 microseconds. This circuit generates a reset signal and from then on the entire microcontroller operates as if it had just been powered on. So uh, if uh, have a prone out reset, the microcontroller uh, should be operates normally or stability. So we have a protection mechanism according to the prone out reset. Okay, so this is the I.O. port. I think uh, we have talked about it in the last lectures because just as we know that the each of the port, I.O. port, uh, according to the each of trace port, uh, sorry, trace register. So the port A registers is according to the trace A register, port B and trace B uh, and so on. So this is the port A and trace E register. Uh, the trace register is to configure where, which of the the bit in the port as a input or output direction. This is port B and trace B. Uh, especially in port B, we have uh, what we have here is the RB0 or interrupt pins is the only true source of external interrupts. At can be configured to react the to the signal boost, signal boost X, or the signal drop X. The signal boost is zero to one transition. Signal drop is one to zero transition. So the ENT TG bit in the option rack register selects the appropriate signal, which is uh, uh, you want to configure the interrupt from zero to one, occur from zero to one, or occur from one to zero. The other one is RB6 and RB7. RB6 and RB7 is used to program the device, program the microcontroller. 
So 877 doesn't have special pin for programming, the process of writing program to know, but this is for the 870, sorry, 887, RP6 and RP7. Okay. So this is the port C and 3C, port D and 3 D, and the last one is port A and 3C. So this is the, the concept of the reset clock and IO port. So we need to know about the PIC 60F877 hardware, especially for the development port and download turn program. So this is the minimum system of the PIC 60F877, not 877, 877. You can, you can buy at indoware.com. Yes. Uh, this is the the port, which is this is the PIC 60F, and the other is pin to connect to the outside peripheral. This is for the input of VCC. This is the input for uh, sorry uh, for the programming device, program uh, downloader devices. So this is only the minimum system. So you need uh, something like this. For example, the Picket Three, or you can uh, use the Picket Two. To download the program into this this minimum system or other minimum system. What do you need? Is this kind? Okay. So if you, you if you don't want to buy this and this or maybe uh, another minimum system and this this kind of programmer, you need to buy the the system with the bootloader uh, feature. So the bootloader is already inside this microcontroller. So uh, the only you you need is cable USB cable to download your program. Okay, to this microcontroller. Okay, because there is already bootloader, just like the Arduino. Because the Arduino platform is the microcontroller with the Arduino bootloader. Okay, so you just need the the port. And also the cable to download the program or maybe to monitor with the serial port. Something like that. Okay, but uh, this is the hardware, the simple hardware you can use for this lecture. But I will, to, uh, I will show you that uh, the hardware port is not the only solution to our lectures or to... Uh, our study of this microcontroller. You can use the simulator and it is free is the PIXIM lab. So the PIXIM lab is adapted for the PIC ATF port Genios. This is the PIC ATF Genios. Okay, the version is 3. It's from Brazil, I think. Yeah. You can see here it's many peripheral, also the uh, text LCD, the fan, the relay, what is this? The the LEDs, the keypad, the seven segment, and the other is okay. Uh, LM thirty five temperature sensor like that, and many of the feature right here. The buzzer, okay. So this is the diagram block of the PIC Genios that uh, what we have here are five ports. The port A is uh, connected to the push button, the potentiometer by two, the relay, the port B is connected to the eight lights, six push button, three by four, uh, sorry, port D is three by four keyboard, four by seven segment multiplex display, eight lights. So uh, there, is, there are two lights here. It, there are two by eight lights here. Uh, each of this is connected to the port B and also the other is connected to the port D. So we have also the PS2 for the keyboard. The LCT 60 by 2 is also the port D and port E according to the data. Uh, you, you have to send your data to the LCT uh, is for uh, use the port D. The temperature sensor is connected to the port E. Uh, the other way is fan. Tachometer fan, heater, serial, I square C, E, PROM, RTC, relay puzzle is uh, connected to the port C. So this is the Pixim Lab software. Uh, the the display or the interface 
is quite similar to this one okay so this is for pic tf genius but you can you can change your microcontroller using this this menu you can click this microcontroller and you can uh, choose which your microcontroller uh, will be used yeah, here uh, in the simulator so uh, we will talk about the circuits in the pic 680 uh, genius the first one is the lcd connection circuit that's in the con the lcd just uh, as you can see in this uh, slide the lcd is 8-bit connection okay 8-bit data connection and also we have uh, what we have here is to to control the lcd so the okay so the the connection is just like here rt04 to rt7 uh, each of this connected to the data 0 to data 7 re uh, re1 is connected to the enable pin in the lct re2 is connected to the rs pin okay so this is uh, R, R, rw why rw is connected to the ground because uh, we only have to write okay right the right is logic zero rv so the right is logic zero so you have to to connect this pin to the ground so uh, you only write to this lct okay the others is a uh, connection to the LEDs and also to the to the deep switch just take a look at here this is the table okay uh, rp0 pot p is connected to the p lab p pot t is connected to the lab t yeah okay that's this sim simple one but you have to switch here like this yeah of the deep switch yeah, here here lab one and lab two okay this is connected to the ground so let one and let two connected to the ground so we can we can send a logical height or logical one to this to this led to turn on each of LEDs. okay because the common the common connection here is connected to the ground okay that's the the simple one of the connection so the other is for the relay is connected to rc0 and RC RA0 for the the first one the first relay and the second relay to, is connected to the RC0 and RA0. So the other is a connection for the four by seven segment. Just take a look at this. Okay. So the the data is going to the port T. All the data is going to the port T. Yeah. Whether it's the, the first display, the second display, the third display, and the fourth display. But you have to switch on one by one here using the display 1, display 2, display 3, and display 4. If you turn on the display 1, so this display will turn on. So if you send the data uh, to the party, the only display on is the, the first one here, not the, the others. If you turn on the display 4, and then the the last display on the fourth display will be turned off. So this is the table. RT0 to RT7 is segment. RT7 is especially for the segment point. The RT0 to RT6 is uh, each of this. is connected to the segment A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So RA2, 3, 4, 5, uh, each of this. Uh, port is connected to the disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, and disk 4. So this is the connection of the 4 by 7 segment display. So the other is the, uh, for the keypad matrix. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, five. The keypad matrix is used the port P and also the port T. The port T is for the row RT0 rt1 rt2 rt3 for the row uh, sorry for the column okay 
and rp is for the row rp2 is right here for the the right of the column rp1 and rp0 rt0 rt1 rt2 rt3 okay so this is the the matrix keypad so the other one is using the potentiometer for the analog signal ra0 is connected to the first potentiometer ra1 is connected to the second potentiometer so you can uh, you have to switch on this this nl1 and nl1 uh, nl0 and nl1 is connected to the ra1 ra0 and rv1 uh, it's of this analog signals and the analysis is, is according to the RA, port A, because uh, the ATC is going to the port A. So this is the LM35, the sensor temperature, and the other is for the cooler, okay, the cooler. Here is cooler. And the RC5, jumper, buzzer, and infrared, this infrared is according to the RC0 so this is a connection for the EE prom and this is for the RTC TS3007 and all the because we have a I square C so the pin is all is only STA and SCK Okay, SDA and SCK to right here. Just uh, you can see that we have uh, two here, but we have what we have. Ah, okay, we have here the RT, the RTE is according to the RS RS zero. Okay, so this is the tip switch. According to the the configuration, just uh, I mentioned before from the previous slides. So, just take a look at the tip switch, and this is the second tip switch. Yeah, according to the LED, to the S square C, the relay, uh, the UART. But in the the first tip switch is according to the temperature sensor, uh, infrared display for the seven segment and also the analog using the potentiometer so this is the the visualization the display of the tip switch and the pixie map it's very it's very simple no okay so uh, that's the concept of the reset clock and gpio uh, after we talk about this and also the software uh, we will use in these lectures uh, in the next slide we will talk about the gpio applications so uh, just to remember that uh, when we talk about the the clock because the clock itself it's like uh, our heartbeat okay our heartbeat our our heart because if there is no heart no no heartbeat it's it's tight, you can, you know, uh, no clock, no operation. So the the core of the microprocessor uh, is the processor itself, but the processor cannot be run unless you uh, activate the clock itself. So the clock is from the oscillator, of course. You can use. Uh, up to 20 megahertz to run your microcontrollers so uh, what we will talk about the application next we will talk about uh, how to to blink the LEDs how to turn on the LEDs uh, how to, to use the the seven segment how to use the uh, something like uh, animation and seven, uh, sorry animation and LEDs and etc and then we, we can talk about the the ATC features and not the digital features after we finish uh, talk about the GPIO concept and also the GPIO uh, application. 
that's for now. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we will see you in the next lectures about the GPIO application. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.